What if I told you almost every pain point in a tool is addressed in a single generational improvement? This one? Nope, not that one. Oh. Now it's a bold claim and I'm here to see if that statement holds true or if Festool missed the mark completely on this newly redesigned TS55 track saw. First, some disclosures. Festool sent me the saw for the sole purpose of review. I do get to keep the tool, but no money changed hands. They do not get to preview this video. Festool did not sponsor this video, but this video does have a sponsor and that's Policy Genius. More on them in a minute. Let's dive in and see what they've done with this saw. There's four parts to this evaluation. The saw, the blades, the track, and the miter gauge. That's right, I said miter gauge. Spoiler alert, it's freaking awesome. But hang on, to understand where we're going, let's take a step back and see where we've been. I've really not been shy in the past about pushing people to the larger TS-75 over the 55 despite its bulkier form factor because of what I've experienced with my old TS-55. Don't get me wrong, overall I love the platform and its integration into Festool's ecosystem, but there's several critical pain points that I've wished would be fixed. From the older generation, pain point number one has always been power and speed of cut. There's a few hacks that I've tried, running your saw off a second circuit since the draw from the back plus the resistance of the insanely long fat cord plus that of the plug it cord on the saw itself leads to less current delivery to the blade. This does seem to help, but it still chugs a bit in three quarter Baltic birch. Viva la resistance. And eight quarter material always took several passes with the old saw. Another trick, just like on an underpowered table saw, is to use an aftermarket thin curve blade. The writhing knife on the saw, however, doesn't support this aftermarket curve size. And I found the Freud, Oshlin, and Tenru branded options to have a fatal stability flaw where they deform, catch, and ultimately result in a horrible finished surface. All right, new guy, show us what you got. The brand new TS55 FEQ, don't know what that means, dash F. That last F stands for facelift and is set to be available in a few weeks. Side by side, I can't say they look much different. So I think we're gonna need a closer look to fairly evaluate what's new. What's this? Does that say 1.8 millimeter? Wasn't the last one 2.2? That's right, Festool has re-engineered an ultra thin curve 1.8 millimeter blade. That's 0.4 millimeters or 20% thinner and 60 grams lighter than the previous generation. It spins almost twice as fast, which equates to a more powerful feeling saw that's removing less material with higher feed rates. And though I can't confirm, they claim this smaller contact patch, less friction area, I would assume results in 50% more life out of the carbide to be determined. What we can determine is whether this thing cuts faster and feels more powerful. All right, we've got the new saw on the bottom half and the old saw on the top. All right, I try to make this as fair as possible. What I'd like to be able to do is cut down eight quarter boards in a single pass. So as you can see, the new saw breezes through this five foot length of eight quarter walnut. While the old saw got about a foot in, it stalled. So I went for a lighter pass, that didn't work. So I found a new power source and then I forgot to turn the hose on and then it started on fire and yeah. Five passes and three minutes later, we're finally through the board. And just look at the cut quality difference. Old versus new. So to be clear, this is a professional setting where tools are used hard and I'm asking a lot of them. I believe this to be a fair ask given the price tag ever since I bought this in 2018. Back then I was honestly, I was abusing it. So much so that I had the saw rebuilt once a couple years ago at no cost thanks to Festool's outstanding warranty with a loaner saw from Woodcraft Boise while it was in the shop. This is what, in my opinion, makes Festool worth the price of the ticket. It's like uh, insurance for your tools. But what if you need insurance for yourself? If you have anyone relying on your income, you need life insurance, hard stop. I would say something here about saw blades and shop safety, but that'll go in one ear and out the other. Nothing's gonna really illustrate this more than telling you about last year when my wife and I lost our son. Luckily, her policy covered him, and believe me, focusing on the important stuff like healing with your loved ones rather than worrying about how to pay rent and bills 
that's invaluable. If we had to solely rely on that coverage though, through my wife's work, it wouldn't have been enough. Most people need about 10 times what their jobs offer, and I can confirm that sounds about right. Policy Genius is your one-stop insurance marketplace to find and buy the coverage you need with a team of licensed experts that work for you, not the insurance companies. Getting started is easy. Click the link below or head to policygenius.com slash Sawyer Design. Answer a few questions about yourself, and in minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find the lowest price and coverage you need. When you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle all the paperwork and scheduling for free. Don't wait. Life insurance gets more expensive as you get older. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash Sawyer Design to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. Thanks to Policy Genius for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to this review. Let's look at this from an angle that's not my own. Let's say you're not yet a Traxxaw owner and looking to get into the game. What makes this the choice over others competing in the marketplace? What does this do that a big ass cabinet saw doesn't? And is it worth the 700 US dollars? That's a thousand with the angle stop. The last one depends on the value you place on that three year coverage, a tool with reliable precision, even with the abuse of a professional setting, best in class desk collection, and the thoughtfully engineered integration into Festool's ecosystem. I can't tell you that, but hopefully the following informs your decision. What it does that your cabinet saw doesn't or doesn't do gracefully is, is cross-cutting long wide panels or sheet goods. For you installers, remember that last time you needed a vertical cut? We'll get back to this, but yeah, this does that. Fellow furniture makers, I wanna see you trim the end of that nine foot, eight quarter oak table after it's glued up on your cabinet saw, not your slider. Yeah, I don't think so. I also find it to be the premier veneer cutter, straight line ripper for stock that's too long for the joiner. And before my joiner, when I first started out, this actually served as my joiner too. Okay, paint point number two ease of use and cutting sheet goods accurately. My shop now is a two car garage, which is exactly twice the size of my old shop and I don't have an MFT. I don't really have room for one. In case you don't know, that's their dog hold reference table that would solve a lot of this issue. But cutting 90 either means pulling a tape across both sides and making a mark on each, then lining up the track using an aftermarket square or 12 inch combo or setting up some other jig to get the job done. Meet the miter stop. Index stops with a long reference. Even that soft-spoken miter gauge guy, Wood Whisperer, Mark Spagnolo, would love. No more pulling a tape on both ends and having to line up that shredded splinter strip. One thing I really like is that you get a line of vision all the way across here. That's something that was missing from pretty much every other aftermarket square that sort of covered up. So you kind of felt underneath to see if there's a gap and that never really works. So I never ended up using one. But the fact that you can see that contact all the way across the stop is really valuable. I was a little disappointed in the strength of these de detents, so I was pleased to find that there was an adjustment for that in the back of the miter stop. All right, so maybe you're working on a panel with a curved edge profile, and that doesn't register with the stop. If you were wondering, who let the dogs out? Festool. Festool, let the dogs out. Don't want or need the long reference face? No worries, it still works with a mini mode too. Now just looking at it, uh, you might be worried about securing it to the workpiece. Check out these clamping points. That's so clever. This next feature is one that I may have used my built-in days, as short as they were, but installers, homeowners, Maverick and Goose, listen up. He's going vertical so much. These a little one, maybe two time use if you're keeping it clean, clips, snap in, peel off, and secure the track to a vertical surface. Though untested, I don't believe my cabinet saw does this gracefully. What's the long hole for? Damn Germans with all their tricks thinking of everything. If you've ever carried a couple sustainers with tracks somewhere, you get this. Clever girl. Clever girl. I'm really more interested in the hanging possibilities this opens up. Toggle wall clamps for the shop and trailer, anyone? If you've got a 3D printer. Hit me up. One thing I really like about my dad's Makita track saw is the light scoring pass it has built in for tear reduction while working on sheet goods. I sort of half expected to see that on this, but the splinter guard that drops down on this saw does such a great job at reducing tear out. 
it's really no surprise that this wasn't something they integrated. If you'd like to see this thing in action or some of the things I build with it, make sure you're subscribed and check out one of these build videos I think you'll like. Thanks for watching my first official YouTube tool review. I hope you found this helpful or at least entertaining. And I'd love if you dropped a comment below with your review of my review and let everyone know what I missed. Until next time, peace.